Hey guys, how's it going? Kriparian here. Today I'm going to explain Dota 2 Auto Chess for you guys. Um, this is kind of like a screenshot uh, of a game that I played on stream the other night. And I'm going to give you guys step-by-step -step learning process. This is basically a Dota 2 community mod. So it's free, you can go and play it. Um, it ap appeals to the likes of a lot of Hearthstone players. It's kind of like a card game. There's really not much chest involved. Uh, it's kind of a cool little mini game. Um, the main thing you have to understand is that um, there's no like tutorial. It's not a full-fledged game. So the learning curve is absolutely brutal. Okay, it's total brutality out there. Um, if you're a new player, you are going to get devastated. So I'm going to help you guys get a little bit better through some learning tips in this game. I'm going to quickly explain what everything else is get you on track and we'll leave you guys with a pretty interesting game. So um, the last three that I played, I won two of them. So I'm pretty decent, even though, yeah, I'm still kind of like an intermediate level player. But uh, the fundamentals, I got them and I'm going to tell you guys about those today. So this is when kind of when the game starts. Um, you can see my mouse here. I'm going to tell you guys what's happening. So uh, you go through different rounds. When you step in, there's eight players total and you play against random players totally at random. You can play against the same guy constantly for like a a really long time if you're very unlucky he might have a counter comp to you uh, some of the rounds are against PvE encounters, and PvE encounters give you items, and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, there is a timer, and the timer is pretty harsh. It's pretty harsh even for an intermediate player. As a new player, you will run out of time, so don't get too frustrated about that. Chesses, this is how many pieces or dudes you can have on the board. It correlates directly one-to-one -one with your chess player level. So when you start the game, you're level one, and you can highlight over the this little icon here to see how much more experience you need for the next level. Each level increases the number of units you can play by one up to a maximum of 10. It also increases what you see in this shop. This is basically the chess shop. All right. So leveling is pretty important. You get one experience uh, for each game that you play uh, and you can boost your experience with this F. F costs five gold and you get five experience. You can level the hard way the first few levels, but after that, you're gonna have to start effing pretty hard. Uh, this is your gold. Gold is a very interesting mechanic and I'll talk about the intricacies of that uh, a little bit later on. Um, so this is like your donkey, what you control the dudes, you control the chess pieces, just to explain the, the key binds. So Q is select something to put it on the board or move it on the board. Uh, w is move something off the board. Uh, e is sell something. Uh, and D is refresh shop. So refreshing the shop costs two gold. That's why it's grayed out at the very start of the game. So you can see that there's a bunch of units in front of me. This is basically the shop. Uh, if you like more than one unit, you can lock it here, but don't worry about that too much. Um, the best way to learn the game is by having a strategy that wins in the early game because you're not going to be behind right away. So I recommend goblin mechs or some kind of warriors. So axe is a pretty good starting unit. We're just going to go ahead and take axe and sh show you guys here how this works. So yeah, little units are up there. Uh, we get to see all, all the animations. This is a custom mod. I encountered quite a lot of bugs throughout my time playing it. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, each round is timed, uh, and if your timer runs out, it kind of goes with what you have. So I ended up going with Axe. Um, your first pick doesn't really matter too much. Um, you can sell back these units after all. Axe costs one gold, and if you sell them back, you just get one gold back. So essentially, they're free. I just, you know, I like to go through chat and see. Uh, and I was thinking about locking here. I end up going locking, try to get Tusk, I suppose, or maybe the double Enchantress. So you want to get a unit at the start that doesn't, like, rely on others in the front line so there's like tanky units like axe so gets the win there the first i believe four or five are against pve encounters and the pv encounters can give you items and you put the items permanently on your uh chesses on your champions let's say uh, and if you want those items back you basically have to vendor the champion and that can be a pretty big deal level two i believe is just uh one xp away so we basically got that i can use two chess pieces there um just pause it here for a second 
So um, the other players are doing the same thing. We see that the last player actually lost his first fight. So 98%. So this is where we can talk about how you win and how you lose. So your donkey here basically has 100 HP and it doesn't go up or down. Um, if you... Um, if your HP goes to zero, you lose, and the last player remaining is basically the winner of the eight-person mini tournament. That's just generally how it works. And um, the way that you win or lose uh, health points is if you lose, the amount of remaining units your opponent has will do, I believe, two damage per unit. So it's a game can last a really long time. Because if you lose, and let's say you have 10 units, your opponent has 10 units, super late game stuff, but you lose. Let's say your opponent only has one chess piece left. So you, you only take the damage of one of them. I think two damage, right? It's nothing. But if all of his 10 just obliterate your 10 and he loses none of them, you take 10 times more damage. So... Um, Yes, losing and winning is not so objective. You know, you can lose by a little and you can lose by an absolute metric ton. So fast forward into the mid game a little bit. We can kind of see how some things have evolved. Um, I ended up going with a bit more of a warrior comp. You can see that each chess piece, each champion has multiple types. You can also see that the shop has evolved now that my player is level six. So I have units that cost more than one gold. Some cost two, some cost three, some later on will cost four and five. Five is the max and those are kind of like the legendary guys. They are quite rare and it's important to know that the unit pool is shared. So uh, I don't think you should take that into account for your first like five games or so but later on you'll see that if other people are take like, let's say you're going warrior you're, you're gonna see if other people are also going warriors because if there's other people doing your strategy you're going from the same unit pool so you'll actually struggle to level up your guys so how do you level up your guys you can see that i have some guys benched here you can have uh, eight slots benched which is basically chess pieces that are not being used um, in your kind of ongoing formation so um with these you want to have in these slots champions that you'll use later on champions maybe you're not too sure about uh, and you want to have multiple copies of the ones that you have in play so right now in play i have two axes you can see them there a little bit and they're kind of like beefier looking axes than the original one they're level two axes you upgrade uh, a chess piece by having three of the previous types so i had three level one axes for that one i had another three level one axes for that one and hopefully i'd get another three level one axes so my three level two axes I could get one level three axe that's kind of the idea and you want to cycle through these that's why you have the shop reset that's why it's important to not have exactly the same strategy as other people and um, in terms of like the archetypes you want to match up some synergies um, so the actual like gameplay outside of the information and you you know moving things around on the screen comes in regards to playing the economy and the economy of units you want to match up the synergies so you can see that razor is an elephant element mage and you have Lena which is a human mage and you have Puck which is an elf dragon mage so if I had all three of those they would activate the mage synergy which I believe is target has reduced magic resistance or something like that so um, it's very powerful synergies you know if you're just playing random units and your opponent is playing uh, units with synergies you're probably gonna lose so that's one aspect that you can control and you can control the number of units that you see here through shop refreshes through player levels and that is controlled through gold so you can see now i have 35 gold which is quite a lot and you can bank up a lot of gold in in order to have um bonuses so the the main bonus is interest every 10 gold you have you get one gold for free that's it so if you have 10 gold you get an additional gold at the end of each round and this caps out at 50 gold. So ideally you wanna be at 50 gold, but if you're floating 50 gold and the other people in the game are not floating 50 gold, um, you are probably gonna lose a bunch of games. So you might be like, oh, that kinda of sucks. You don't wanna lose a bunch of games, but that's where it get, gets a bit interesting. So um, if you have a win streak, you get additional gold uh, for each time that you win. 
If you have a lose streak, you actually get gold each additional loss that you lose. The only time where you don't get additional gold after a round is if you ended your win streak or ended your lose streak. So if you win one, lose one, win one, lose one, you make no extra gold at any point and that is actually bad. So basically, if you're just starting up the game, I recommend that you go for some of the stronger early game stuff. Go for warriors, go for mechs, go for goblins. They're very good early game units that kind of struggle in the mid and late game. But it's very clear and it's a lot easier to play this game if you're winning. But always winning is not necessarily the best strategy. Banking up a lot of gold and losing but not getting absolutely crushed so you don't lose that much hit points to maintain a lose streak knowing just how much to put down so you lose but you don't get absolutely annihilated in order to have reoccurring gold bonuses is kind of like the winning play in some cases and knowing where those limits are is something you'll have to learn with experience so um, that's why we see a lot of gold there uh, typically when you are starting to lose really hard uh, against the remaining opponents that's when I spend my gold I typically try to level up so I can have more guys on the board going from like five chess pieces to like six it's not just 20% more units it's 20% more units with added synergies added like auras and bonuses between the extra unit and the other five so it's more than a 20% boost in power level the number of units is very important to keep up now when we fast forward to the late game, you kind of get to see the strategy in effect. When people start losing, they basically dump all their resources and I ended up doing pretty well in this game. So I realized that all my opponents dump their resources. So let me see if I can dump just enough of my resources, just, just enough of the gold that I've saved up to kind of match them. Um, I also noticed that a lot of my opponents who are doing particularly well against me are doing at least part magic damage and warriors, one of their weaknesses is magic damage. So to kind of go around that, um, I ended up blowing my gold here. Let's kind of see the end of this round. Um, I believe I lose this round, but it's very marginal. So if I had a 10th unit there, it would have been a pretty big deal. And you can kind of see there's a lot of things that you need to get a lot better at. Uh, like right now I have a full bench, so it's kind of a bit tricky. This 30 second window after each battle where you have to try to get ready and get a new composition can be uh, very difficult to maneuver around. Uh, even though I lost there, uh, it wasn't too, too bad. And here we go. It's, it's, it's time to try to figure out what we're going to do. Um, uh, I see that uh, my axes is probably, I see that the game's not going to last that much longer. So I'm thinking, um, do I want axe or do I, you know, want to get rid of axe completely? Uh, and I think I end up going with a slark. Yes, Slark, level two Slark. And the reason I do that is because uh, Slark is a Naga and I'm, act I'm going to try to activate the uh, four Naga bonus. I ended up getting Slark earlier, noticing that my opponents are using at least part magic damage and I was a little bit weak to it. Um, and then I try to activate that bonus again. Uh, to get the final bonus, you typically need some of the really late game units. Uh, the fourth Naga is Tide Hunter. So basically I think at throughout this game, um, all I'm really trying to do is roll, re-roll and get a Tide Hunter. Uh, my opponent's only chance to beat me is magic damage and I think otherwise they can't really win anymore and they have blown all of their gold at this stage. So these are things that you'll start to pick up on and this is how you'll kind of learn to seal out the games that you're playing. Like, um, I think here, I, I don't know if I do it right away or uh, through the next few turns, but getting that interest through gold, which is so important, basically up until the very last few rounds of the game, it's no longer really that important. Right now, uh, my opponents have all like blown their gold. They're just trying to get a few RNG wins. They're trying to position their units a little bit differently. Um, ideally, you want those tanky units in the front. You want those squishier units in the back, but not too far in the back because 
the assassin type chess pieces, they will immediately go to the back row. So, um, yeah, just crushing these guys. Uh, they're kind of on on the last end here, and uh, yeah, this is a pretty easy game in the end game. Uh, and I think I ended up winning it because um, a lot of them were playing um, a comp that was getting countered by the warriors. Some luck for me there because I didn't even really know that. I kind of just went for, you know, just pick some synergies, see how it works out, get some get some new experiences, get some some learning out of that. And uh, I realized that, you know, my opponents were fairly weak to it, so I saw them adding magic units, so I started adding Nagas so I could get um, that magic resist. And I think as a result of that, I just kind of snowballed out of control pretty quickly here. Um, I ended up losing a, a decent number of the rounds, but they were early on. I think I even had lose streaks. And uh, the rounds that I lost were not like crushing losses. I lost by, you know, two or three units, and I got maybe I got pretty lucky there as well but uh, yeah I ended up having a lot of my health left the health at the end is not quite as important you do have to see this health pool as a resource you want to use that resource to extend your lose streaks if you do happen to lose a few um, it's very difficult in fact, I would say it's probably suboptimal to try to win every single round that ever is I think uh, especially some uh, chess piece compositions, I know with Mage perhaps, uh, it's very difficult to win the early game. So trying to excessively push the archetype to win in the early game, it can be less efficient than intentionally losing to build up a lose streak. But again, you don't want to lose by too much because you want to invest those uh, health points effectively. So here I am basically sealing out the deal. I'm just refreshing like crazy. I'm like, where's Tidehunter? Where's Tidehunter? Where's Tidehunter? Two gold. You can refresh while the battle is happening, but when it goes to the ready stage, it automatically refreshes once for free unless you click this little lock thing. Uh, spoiler, we ended up blowing all of our gold, which is certainly the correct play in this scenario to get that Tidehunter but I have a sneaky suspicion that it wasn't just luck. I have a sneaky suspicion that my opponents saw that I was countering their magic units with the Nagas. So um, at least one of them ended up buying the Tide Hunters. So I would never be able to get that fourth, uh, that, that four Naga uh, chess piece bonus for my unit's magic resistance. Because, uh, yeah, the unit pool is shared. There's a lot of interesting aspects about this game. So, uh, yeah, have some fun. Um, my final thoughts on uh, Dota Auto Chess. Um, it is a very fun game. It's a very cool game. Don't take it, like, too, too seriously. Uh, my feeling is the hype right now is particularly high because it appeals to what a lot of card players like, but also because noob crushing is extreme right now. There's a lot of people playing who have absolutely no clue what they're doing, and even as even if you've made it to this point in the video, you should absolutely annihilate those players. So um, you kind of get that feels good moment because uh, a lot of these guys you know you just waste them so yeah it is what it is but uh you can get a few kicks you can learn some things there's certainly some cool mechanics uh that we can all appreciate and have some fun at the end of the day give you guys a highlight of uh, another very notable game that i played uh, which is uh, probably the craziest late game that at least i have ever experienced playing dota auto chess so uh, even if you've seen some dota auto chess videos you may not have seen anything quite like this enjoy the rest of it and we'll see you guys tomorrow oh real player alert Dude's playing a ton of assassins. The mage doesn't really do very well. Monster kill. Well enough. Trees are not so good with motion, you know. Okay, uh, let's get him leveled, give him a shield.
so he doesn't die instantly. Luna's the best elf. I already have six elves. Reposition Lone Druid. I don't, I don't know, is he not tanky? Oh. No, he's not tanky. I just saw him get absolutely shit on. Fix your settings, Gabe. Fix it. Lone Druid. Trans protector. He's the Druid, right? Yeah. Okay, so we'll put Druid there then. Oh, Luna. In the service of Salamene. Okay, I'm gonna need another Luna. I'm running out of space right now. I have too many elves. I have more than six elves. So... I should drop an elf. I'm not gonna get a hunter bonus, so it's probably a wind ranger. Void stone. Who needs mana? I don't know the mana system, guys. You gotta tell me on this one. Oh god. Find your grave. The next level of trees are not so good at the ocean, though. I'll not, I'll not be rushed. What is this? A game of some sort? Okay, let's sell the Wind Rippers. Down Temple Assassin. Wind Ripper. I don't know what it is, Necrophos. More Tux. Okay. A game of some sort? I pupate a new. Uh, let's... let's rank up. Oh, I guess I can't yet. Wow, that costs a lot to rank up. Holy shit. This guy seems pretty legit. Assassin again. There we go. Should we add another dragon dude? It's level two. That's probably what we should do. Dragon Knight. Someone said Dragon Knight's pretty good. Can I get Dragon Knight? Synergy. Got Lich. Oh, anti mage. That's right. I, I still bring think an end to magic. People said Lich is good, right? It's a mage. I am the dead of winter. Lich instead of second puck. Oh, did I do the right one? Oh, they both have no items. Oh, that guy seems pretty cool. Juggernaut. Huh?
Techies. Too late for that, right? Techies good still. Plate mail. Enchanted, I'm sure. Oh, ultimate orb. What's that? Anyway, let me. I'll just sharpen my. Sp I'll just sharpen my spear, and I'm ready to go. Where do I want to put these items? Orb on TA. Well, let's give her some armor while we're at it. Armor on tank. Okay, well, I don't fucking know right now. My tank's dead. Oh, I got another bitch. I am the dear in the service of Salamene. A new moon. I think I should try to upgrade. Try to get at least the dragon knight in, right? Oh, a pretty close on Puck. Some sort? Sell the Anti-Mage, you think? I want to sell the Dragon Knight. I'm not going to use the Dragon Knight. Level up Puck. No, I'm not ready on Puck. I bring an end to magic. Close on Anti-Mage. I'm close on too many. Alright, I want to level up right now. Right. Forgot about that. It's gonna be a bit hard to level up Luna at this stage. Oh, I got 10? Why did I get 10? Alright, I'm gonna put another Lich in then. No, let's put in the Dragon Knight, right? Dragon Knight? Oh, Puck. What is this? A game of some sort? Puck's done. Level 3 Puck, boys. Three dragon. Why is my why do I have a panda beating up people? Is level three druid a panda? I got Phantom Assassin. That's probably decent. What? I pupate a new. I pupate a new. I get Phantom Assassin, the worst assassin. Oh, I can level up Lich. The shed of winter. Viper, if I want dragons. Prepare for poison. 
What do I take out the Oh I got another lich, what the fuck? I am the dead of winter. The frost spreads. I don't know what to use here. Take out anti-mage. But I won't have six elves if I take out anti-mage. Take out enchant. 10% damage with enchantress. Level three. Drop Dragon Knight for a second undead. I bring an end to magic. Oh, yeah. Is Tidehunter good enough? The hunter feasts. Fine. Let's scrap the let's scrap the Dragon Knight then and the Viper. And let's put Tide in. And let's level up uh oops. Vile sorcerers, to thy just reward, my blade compels thee. Okay. Yeah, let's refresh. Alchemist. So I bring an end. I swear I hit refresh, but it, it's like lag or something. Disruptor. In the sure, I can try man. Luna now, because everything else is basically finished. I am the dead of winter. Stay at 50 gold. Oh, did I pass on two Lunas? Oh, my bad. Level up? You can't level past 10. 10 is the max. Oh, he has a level 3 Slark. It's killing everything. Okay, that thing's kind of crazy. The hunter feasts. I could eat a shark. I'm not gonna get. Level three on that anytime soon. He's gonna be dead. Oh, anti mage, I bring an however. End to magic. I need only one more. I don't think I have enough space for Luna. Alchemist. Luna again. Anti mage. There we go. To magic. Vile sorcer. Vile sorcerers. To thy just reward, my blade compels thee. I'm just gonna burn all of my gold right now. There's not much I can get for upgrades. The dude's dead very soon. Did he just give up? Oh no, this is a dragon. The defeat of magic is complete. Did I get any, any items? Oh, what did I buy? 
You don't want to buy that shit. Target magic resistance. Put on the lich, I guess. Uh, let's go burn all the gold now. Techies. Damn it, I missed the Luna. Never Temple Assassin. Grave. That's two already, so it's gonna take a while to get the three. But... God, there's another lich. I can get two level two liches. Let's see Tidehunter versus Lich damage. Do I want a level two lich or a level two Tidehunter? Tide is CC. Oh my god, Temple Assassin. Okay, uh. They'll never find your grave. The next level of my ordination. Oh, Lich is number one DPS? Really? Items combined for better items? Yeah, I don't know. What the fuck is that? I don't know what that is. Okay, I put a bunch of items on Anti-Mage. Oh. Okay, I guess he died. 